my face and start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of hell, too sweet to be sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the wood. Hot damn. Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. I'm Pat Riley. This is the good night, the man of the hour, the tower of power, the man who is too sweet to be sour. And we are back in Los Angeles from our uh, holiday sojourn. How, how was everybody's uh, trip home? Actually, first, let's before we even start messing around here, let's bring in our guest, star of the uh, Grand View Grocery <laughs> Store open mic down in Venice, California. He's not even a star there. Well, oh, come on. It's a fleeting star. Yeah. I'm a host of an open mic. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> My name is John Faso. Yeah. yeah. Not You've Faso. heard him before. I was going to say, Faso. a.k.a. Neighbor John. Neighbor been John. Been in the background, the, of, time. Yeah. the background of many episodes. He lives in a on, cardboard box outside. Right. It's finally, nice. Finally up on plug four. That's what I've started doing, by the way. I've just started calling it plug, like De La Soul used to. You know, uh, like there was plug one and plug two. Yeah, you got to be careful talking about plugs around Faso if you want, you know, that microphone back in any condition. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding on to yours. Don't worry. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a joke about his hair. <laughs> oh, it's so dirty. <laughs> what hair? <laughs> what hair? <laughs> I got more hair in my face than I do my hair. Yeah, he grew it down there to hide, you know, how bad he was balding. grow it on top, grow it in front. <laughs> I can do both. Oh. I can multitask, Faso. What can you do? So you're you're from you're from the South Bay. What was what, 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 what were your uh, what were your holiday plans down in the South Bay this year? This year, I didn't do anything. I yeah. think because um, my mom goes to Indian casinos on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh, which Fuck which yeah. one? She doesn't know why. I think that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which which ones does she go to? Uh, it's either Morongo or Pachanga. Oh, yeah. Morongo yeah. definitely has the, uh, was it, Fifty Shades of Male? What, their their is that men's their review. Rip, is that their ripoff uh, Thunder Down Under, basically? <laughs> yeah, it's a ripoff of Magic Mike, Fifty Shades of Male. <laughs> is it a stage show? or is it Yeah, a... it's like a stage show where oh. it's just like a bunch of Chippendales. Is it better than Sex is Santa and the Candy Cane Girls? <laughs> <laughs> was, was that in the Birmingham doings? <laughs> no, 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 that's out here. Sex oh, that's is, out here. They banned me from it because I was sexier than Sex is Santa and any of them Candy Cane Girls. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's all right holiday show, I guess, because they can't get the Rockettes out here. So you... You don't ever go to the casinos? You just hang out? No. You know, I went one time when uh, I was about 19. Uh-huh. With I, a fake ID. Yeah. Uh, this is why I don't gamble, by the way. Uh-huh. It's because I went they there. They made you sit in the with, daycare center? <laughs> well, I made my own daycare center at the bar later on. But, um, yeah, I just went in at a um, blackjack table with $40. Like, here, give me my chips. And I lost it in about 20 seconds. A blackjack? So, yeah, Black so Jack. I just like, all right, I'm never going to gamble again. Black you know Jack, what? I got uh, two of those, too. <laughs> you know, you play 21, 21, I got 22. Got you want to play Blackjack, I got two of those, too. <laughs> Fossil, yeah. do you know what chimp can play Blackjack? <laughs> I, I could play it, just not very well. Yeah, but you're not even at the intelligence level of a chimp. That is the, the point I have here. one bad hand. What the, is it the left one or the right one? <laughs> <laughs> You're making been, this too well, easy. This is the fossil. family show. River said it was a family show. He's got a wife and three kids. Yeah. Got a fat yeah. wife and eight kids. That's what it is. <laughs> I, I should have had a couple of drinks before this. <laughs> it's okay. Well, I have some grain if you want some. I've, I've never gone to the, uh, the Indian casinos out here. Are they any good? Are they like... Full well, casino you know, compared to Vegas? They, well, no, not compared to Vegas, well, but like, I don't know. I'd be honest with you. If you're going to go to gamble, I don't think they're that great. Good night. You know, actually, Fossil, we've done this. We've you done forget this. this. We go to casinos a lot, but we just go for a spree of smoking, drinking, and smoking other things, too, and just. <laughs> Yeah. Staying up all day, night in a daytime, day in a nighttime type stuff. And if you want to go to them, get high and just spend a night trying to drink and smoke all over the place, it's all right. You can but, you, you know. can smoke in the uh, in like Pachanga and Morongo. Yeah, yeah, I think they prefer yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's half. Of, I swear, half of the appeal of going to casinos is just it's a smoker's paradise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, mm-hmm. of course. I've only gone on the casino boats. In uh, in Ooh. Florida, yeah, yeah, the Ooh. casino boat, casino queen, yeah, it's uh, 
It's like they get this. Oh, the, the, the boat is terrible. <laughs> yeah, is, is it one of them ones that's just kind of moored, or is it those ones where they go out, like you know, out to the limit? Where yeah, you- they go out to the they go out to international waters. Yeah. so you can <laughs> uh, you can gamble. <laughs> and so you go out on this boat, and the boat's always just like a piece of trash. Like it's it's bad. Ew. It's like a, a charter boat, but like from the 1970s, and they haven't done anything to renovate it except put in some like you know video poker machines or Lord of the Rings video slots. And it's always hilarious because you always see the guy that goes and blows all of his money in the first like five minutes <laughs> and he just sits there all defeated next to the guy that's playing the Jimmy Buffett covers, just <laughs> head in his hands, just like, what have I done? And he's on this boat so he can't escape. He can't leave. He's just stuck next to some guy like playing cheeseburger in paradise. Yeah. So he should have just got drunk and sat there for the Jimmy Buffett the whole time because yeah. that's the real joy of the casino. I, they also they also had those and they had video slots in Florida too. So I guess that counts as a casino slightly so what they did in florida is they had uh they would get these internet cafes they called them internet cafes uh-huh. it's because they were trying to find a loophole so they call them an internet cafe and basically they have one copy machine and then a bunch <laughs> of video slot <laughs> machines like 50 of them and it's just all these like ancient looking retired people that just have their oxygen tanks and they're just smoking inside and they have like all you can eat 7-eleven basically it's just Ooh, like this sounds <laughs> pretty sounds good like <laughs> Street. yeah so it's just like yeah. it's not you don't get like alcohol you just get like Cokes and Slim Jims and like... Uh, uh, where's the problem with any of this? I mean, you <laughs> yeah. can sneak in your own Cheetos, booze. yeah. And the thing was, was that the state of Florida wanted to ban it. They wanted to ban these these video slot places. What's wrong with them? Uh, I don't know. Uh, they just want to ruin all the fun. Yeah, it's government intrusion. But in, in, in typical uh, inept Florida state government <laughs> fashion, when they drafted the bill, they wanted to make it vague enough so that they could ban like all iterations of video slot places. Turns out they made it so vague that they banned the internet in the state of Florida. <laughs> it was basically one can we've banned one computer terminal that connects to another computer terminal, and it's just basically they banned the internet. Is this the whole state of Florida? They yeah, banned? yeah. So yeah. if Mickey wow. tries to check his email, he can't. He yeah, can't. he couldn't for like a week. You know? That's yeah. why they're always so far behind. Oh, man, is going to be pissed at him. You guys mentioned Jimmy Buffett. I heard officially my favorite cover. I've ever heard of Margaritaville. Uh, so I'm, I work as a tour guide, and I have to be at the Santa Monica Pier pretty much every day. And uh, I've gotten a real, like, pinch on for all of the performers pinch there. Like, like, I kind of know... <laughs> I, kind of, I, I, I kind of know who all's out there. My favorite superstars are... Uh, there's the kettle drum guy, uh, who's, yeah. who, uh, you know, plays a good Margaritaville himself. He used to be in Stomp or one of them things, right. didn't he? <laughs> right. And then there's a uh, the guy I call Fake James Taylor, who uh, <laughs> sound... <laughs> 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 He looks like just like you pick a, a Dorothea Lang photograph of the Great Depression of a man. He looks like that, just like withered face. Like he doesn't look anything so like, like James, James Taylor. Well, he like. doesn't look exactly like James Taylor. He looks like uh, Tom Joad or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks like Tom Joad, except he sounds like James Taylor, but he only sings Simon and Garfunkel songs, which is fucking weird. I am just a poor boy. My story is seldom told. I have squandered my resistance like a pocket of Mumbles, like you walk Why by, isn't he the Simon and Garfunkel guy? That's what I'm saying. It's because he specializes in Simon and Garfunkel in the style of James yeah, Taylor. It's weird. Yeah. You walk by and you're like, why don't, dude, why don't you just sing Fire and Rain over and over and you'll make more money that way? He's like, I can't stand that shit. Yeah, he hates James Taylor, but he sounds just <laughs> like him. But my favorite guy out there, there's there's a, a guy who, uh, you know, he's, he's out there pretty much every day and he sings generally like classic rock and country songs, but in a very, very thick Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> and he this is, is globalism. For oh, you. he is my favorite person. And I was out there yesterday, actually, and he was out there going, Wasting no way again in Margaritaville, <laughs> searching for my. He, he's my favorite. He, I, like, I've heard him do. Step uh, on the pop top, <laughs> blew out <laughs> my flip flop. <laughs> I'm yeah. just imagining Nikita Cole off singing. <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you can walk 20 It's feet. my own damn fault. I am the greatest <laughs> Russian. You can walk 20 feet and you have your picture taken of a cardboard cutout of Justin Bieber. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You could pretend it was him singing. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I heard him. I heard him doing uh, Margaritaville. The other, my other favorite of his is he'll go. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling <laughs> rounds the bend, and it's fucking it's like amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, y'all gotta meet Mike and Dave sometime. They're a trip. 
who are Mike and Dave? Well, you know, they're rock stars is what they are. They're right. rock stars. Dad, dad right. rock stars. Yeah, they're open mic rock stars, and they go out dad there. Dad rock stars? Like, they play dad rock music? Yeah. For the most part, they yeah. They really dad it up, too. Yeah, but uh. it's a sight to see because they're the biggest dad rock thing I've ever seen. But every now and then, they'll do these prog songs or things like Southern Cross, and they're really good. They have really? moments where they really gel. I'm a big fan of Mike and Dave. Wait, are they? Are they at the? They're at the uh, the old Grand View down there. They do the Grand View a lot. And they do. Oh, uh, I know those. You've seen them at the Unurban, probably. Yeah, no, I saw I saw one of them at uh, at Grand View. He's a huge. One of them's a huge fan of of my friend Butt Rock Brett. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the one that looks like William Shatner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's great. He's uh, he's Mike, I believe. Yeah. They do all the songs that uh, you learn when you're learning guitar. Oh, okay. You know, they're, so they're hot really cross buns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no. Really good at those. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> you know, but, you know, Yankee Doodle, Amazing any, Grace. Uh, that, but who plays hot cross buns on a guitar? That's like that's like the first song you learn on recorder. But you know, I mean, mm-hmm. if you if you need me to go to the wall and grab a guitar, I can I can play some mean hot cross buns. <laughs> One a penny. He's available for parties. Two a penny. Hot cross buns. <laughs> what is that? B a g b a g. B B B B A A A A B A G. Yeah. Also, the title of Mr. Goodnight's uh, first album. I'm not a singer. God, that's actually a great title for something to call something. Hot Cross Buns is hilarious. <laughs> is that an insult, Fossil? <laughs> it's attempt at one. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, totally you're not very good at it, Fossil. Yeah. Yeah. Hot Cross Buns and other hits. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> How was everybody's New Year's? Did it was, was all right. Yeah, New Year's insane. is never a big good night holiday. Yeah, and neither has it been for me. It's amateur hour, basically. So that's a that's a good way to put it. I had a little bit of the uh, the pressure taken off as far as uh, having a party because uh, part of my job on New Year's Eve was I got to host and drive around 100 Motley Crue fans. Yeah. <laughs> That probably was a good time. Sort of. It probably would have been a good time 30 years ago. In 2015, it was the weirdest. So, like I said, I work as a tour guide, and Motley Crue played their last show ever on New Year's Eve at the Staples Center here well, in Los Angeles. Well, it's their last touring show. Well, I remember when I saw their last show ever at the Hollywood Bowl <laughs> last year. So they've qual- they've qualified it, and they said it's their last touring show. So they can they basically they don't have to they they can play in L.A. They're still available for Super Bowl if anybody wants to. Yeah, book absolutely, them. and that would be awesome. That, that would, would be, be actually, that'd be so yeah. much better than Coldplay and Beyonce. Oh God, I that's true. Because I do not, I am not big on Beyonce. I never have been. You no, understand? Beyonce is fine. Coldplay is what I am. Yeah, it's like with. Beyonce had a pretty good Super Bowl Beyonce performance. Beyonce is pretty good if you turn the sound down, but that's about it. But Coldplay doesn't even got that going for him. Has Bon Jovi played the halftime show yet? Because I be figured better that than that Coldplay. Would, I figured I that that would be the, the next logical step, that Bon Jovi would play it. I think they played around the time of their comeback in the late 90s. Really? If I'm not mistaken, I kind of have a vague memory of that because it was, it was one of those bands that was like in the lead up mm-hmm. to uh, Janet Jackson... Uh, Justin Timberlake when they're just now flirting again with contemporary music. It took you know half a decade. I've got a revolutionary idea I think would make the Super Bowl so much better. What's that? A 15 minute halftime and we have school bands play at it. That was the first that one. That was the first Super That's Bowl. That's the way yeah. it ought to be. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think the first the first non-marching band performer was like Al Hurt, I think it was, or something <laughs> like that. It's like Al Hurt. <laughs> like, you know, that would be good. He mesmerized audience. Yeah, I was going to say, to paraphrase Lewis Black, when I think football, I think Al Hurt. But yeah, we, we basically had to meet up at the Andaz Hotel, formerly the uh, Hyatt House, a.k.a. the Riot House on Sunset Boulevard. That's where they were putting them all up. And uh, there were two buses. Our bus drivers didn't speak English, uh, so it was already going to be a clusterfuck of a day. But basically, we organized a tour to take a large charter bus in a loop down the Sunset Strip, past all of like the clubs and stuff that were pertinent to Motley Crue's history. We drove past some of the studios and like Hollywood Boulevard and all this kind of stuff. And uh, basically, like my group was if you just took the entire state of Florida and smashed them onto a bus, yeah. like just oh, man, that's <laughs> just fucking fifty year olds with flat billed hats and yeah. dyed goatees and just and a <laughs> ponytail sticking out the back. Just 
So too. the band really, was on on the bus. I pretty much. Really believe yeah. in it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so just but yeah, but it's easy to entertain them because all you really got to do is cruise up and down the Sunset Strip and blare Doctor Feelgood and give them drinks, and they ain't going to complain. Therein lies the problem. We did not have drinks, uh, so it oh, was well, it that's... was like eleven o'clock, and this guy. So I would just say, you know, I, I we were given a sheet of places we were going to pass by, so I had to say like, all right, everybody, you look over to the right. Uh, this is Cherokee Studios. This is where Motley Crue recorded their album Theater of Pain. And this one guy just kept going, where's the damn bar? <laughs> and the whole bus would crack up. He got six <laughs> like laugh breaks on where's the damn bar. He kept, like it You're killed heckling. my it killed me my will to be a comedian because of how hard he was killing harder than I've ever. Well, you got to work him in. I don't know. You've never gone to a stand up comedy show in Florida because no, that's, I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> they just keep yelling, where's the damn bar? Yeah, basically. <laughs> and it sucked because I couldn't shut him down because I was at work. You know, so I can't just say anything. So I just have to be like, <laughs> while he keeps going, where's the damn liquor store? Why don't we stop for liquor? You right know? there. Well, they probably should have, to be honest with you. I mean, that wasn't y'all guys' fault, but yeah. I mean, if you're going to do Motley Crew b- bus boo, it's got to be a booze cruise, or what's the point? Yeah, it should, probably should have. But yeah, so that was that was how I spent my my New Year's Eve was with uh with fifty Motley Crew fans, and we went and found like Mick Mars's house out in Malibu. Who's that? Uh, Mick, Mick Mars is the guitarist. He's the guitarist for oh, yeah, Motley Crew. He's, a, he's, a, he's the mummy guitarist. Guitarist he, he has the Kirk. mustache like Canton Floss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, looks like, he looks he looks kind of like a, a withered Spinguli. <laughs> he kind of does. Say, he's what that's coming like, out of all your mouths. I have no idea. What you're when, when it's they, always when, that way with me. When they pulled Rasputin out of the frozen river, <laughs> oh, okay. he had a guitar. <laughs> and he had a guitar. And, you know, they found him. There was he put out an ad in the music paper. <laughs> And it said, serious, intense motherfucker. <laughs> Only call if you're serious. And that was Mick Feckin' Mars. That yeah. was the first Craigslist ad. Well, yeah. no, it was in the music papers, mm. Fossil, you know, because yeah, people I used know. to do, it's called a band, and the, there's guys that <laughs> play instruments up. <laughs> and things like this. But I tell you this, when I started him at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, his solo, that was one of the best parts. Well, you know, he's he's kind of the most redeeming quality yeah, about Motley yeah. Crue. I remember seeing the behind the music of Motley Crue back in the 90s because they used to run it over and over. It was a yeah. show on VH1. It was the Motley Crue behind the music and Dr. Dre behind the music. I like and they would see Hammer. Yeah, that was MC a thing. Hammer, and Hammer. Yeah. Yeah. MC Hammer and Men. Millie Vanilli were kind of oh, the ones Millie that put Vanilli that show on the great. map. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. And the Tony Orlando and Dawn. Oh yeah, showed that yeah. one as well. <laughs> well, I watch anything with Tony Orlando. I, I love the is. part of the. I love the part of the. The one thing that I always heard on behind the music that defied all logic. <laughs> they had all these stories about people doing all sorts of things, and that was kind of the leap motif of the show. But the one thing that always blew my mind about that show, the one fact that I heard was the Tony Orlando and Don one, where Tony Orlando said that he smoked four packs a day, which Ooh. I didn't even know was possible. <laughs> like, was he smoking like two cigarettes at one time? Did his dad catch him smoking and just made him do it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, was he hanging out with Ronnie Wood or something? <laughs> just, I'll just tell you, though, I mean, that's, that's called high living. I know. Yeah. Him, and, yeah. him and Freddie Prince, <laughs> Freddie Prince <laughs> yeah. maybe trying to had, kill a carton. <laughs> well, maybe he had Freddie Prince smoke the other two, and he made it look like it was just him because they kind of looked the same because yeah. all Freddie Prince would have had to do was come in the room or Tony I should say all Tony Orlando had to come in the room and say looking good and everybody would have thought he was Freddie Prince anyway <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah the way they used to show the, the behind the music Mick Mars was like he was like the adult in the band seemingly like he was okay. the one guy like he does the, seem like he was older than other guys right yeah. well and he also just seemed like he had his head screwed on a little better yeah he's, uh, he's kind of like the musician of the group yeah he really yeah. is yeah so he, he'd he be their uh, their musical director and the rest of them just kind of like fuck around you know the thing is you don't even have to like their music. The show is fun. Tommy Lee's uh, heard his his roller coaster broke down. Yeah, yeah so yeah. T- if you don't know, Tommy Lee, the drummer from Motley Crue, his drum riser is a looping roller coaster that will begin sort of swinging back and forth like a pendulum. Yeah, and then eventually it's he's going upside down. Yeah, because they rose the stakes of, of of his drum riser because the first like be, like there were B ones. I think around 87 where it just started turning upside down like it would you right know, mm. the rotating drum riser and then you know they were you have to raise the sticks you have to yeah. raise the stakes with the drum riser so yeah now he's on a roller coaster and on New Year's Eve he got stuck upside down on the upside <laughs> down on the the drum roller coaster uh, did he play through it yeah I, I guess he had to do you yeah. have to push that thing out of his face to play <laughs> I tell you that, no, I never say this. I was going to be in a Motley Crue tribute band once, and it, they they had me playing playing that guy, well, Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee. I could not play a lick of drums, but they told me I was qualified. You understand? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Y'all can cut that out, Rufus. <laughs> but yeah, he was stuck upside down. The blood must have rushed to his head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, I just got horrified at the idea of of, uh, of Good Night having to play Tommy Lee and just being his like jock strap. <laughs> We went to that house, by the way, the house where they shot all that stuff. What did they shoot? The the pornography. Oh, uh, pornography! I, I don't watch well, pornography. Part of it's on a boat, and part of it's at a house, and uh, uh, the house is up on uh, Laurel Canyon. Oh, you mean the, the does thing, have, uh, does the it sex have California tape. historical designation? <laughs> Probably, yeah. It's just, and it was also it was also on uh, on MTV Cribs, and it was the most obnoxious MTV Cribs ever. MTV Cribs, come on, welcome to Tommy Land. Let's roll. Because he had this random group of of like women with him, he probably hired a bunch of women from the Spearmint Rhino right, to come, yeah. and he <laughs> was just—it was during like his his methods of mayhem, yep, yep. phase, M O M baby, yeah. And he was just—he it was just him walking around, just acting like he was king shit of the universe. Ooh, it's getting yummier and yummier. <laughs> I pretty much designed all this. Look, this right here, babies have been made. <laughs> and lots of love. Look, dude, if you're a pimp, you gotta have a mirror above your bed, all right? And the big thing was he was just like, I got a Starbucks in my house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was that. just, <laughs> oh, bro, God. you don't wanna go to Starbucks? I got a Starbucks. In my house. Does he know oh they God. sell their coffee? Yeah, it was yeah. just their coffee with like cups, like Starbucks <laughs> cups. Like somebody, so he, he probably paid somebody like. He just had like a little Mr. So, coffee. Yeah, with it was Starbucks. like $200,000. I've had probably. a closed down Dunkin' Donuts in, in my house yeah. for the last so year and a half. guy version of spinning rims. Yeah, he was just like, he probably paid some guy half a million dollars. And the guy came back with a big super bun like coffee maker, a bunch of like <laughs> Starbucks coffee from Ralph's and a bunch of cups that he probably stole from Starbucks and then the from other the Starbucks one, at the Ralph's yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> went over by the dumpsters <laughs> and then the other part was just like he's talking about his studio and he's just like this is this is our one of our new songs it's gonna be the biggest joint ever and it's gonna be called fuck to this uh-huh. <laughs> and it was like the worst song ever boys in blue still roughing me up on the TV news still talking it up never thought Tommy Lee could be fucking it up to mayhem, fill the adults. I walk up in your party and I'm spacking the bus. If you had enough, you know what to do. I go, yes, I promise you, fuck you. Tired of the boys in blue running up on you. And they like showed the women dancing all seductively to it. And it was just him, like in slow motion for two minutes. Doing this, like jumping around <laughs> in a circle with his hands up. It was, it was jumping jacks. Yeah, doing jumping jacks. It was <laughs> the worst television ever. Let's go down the Japanese garden. We have to be very quiet here, very spiritual. This right here, this is where we chill, we shut the whole world off. This is basically where you get your head back together from all the madness that happens in the mayhem. And there's my boys down there, all the koi. Ah, I love them. Koi fish right here. Uh, uh. Yeah, it's all pretty bad. See, Mick Mars would have had more class. Yeah, Mick Mars would have been. Yeah. The only episode I've seen of that show is the one with Puck from... Uh, <laughs> Oh, God, was he living in a bus station? Hold on, P- what do you mean, Puck from, like, what, British mythology? Or whatever? <laughs> from from yeah, the real world. Know. Yeah, real world, that's what it is. Yeah, the, the guy who stuck his fingers in the peanut butter all the yeah, time. Yeah. I saw his house. <laughs> <laughs> what was his house? Yeah. It was like basically the Red Man episode, but if it was real, real. and not stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So they had one about tobacco? <laughs> yeah. Red yeah. Man. Who's, who's Red? Is that a Wu Tang guy? Yeah, so Red Well, no, well, there's the guy no, from it's Method Man. Wu Tang yeah. affiliated. It's yeah. the tobacco that you get in a package. No, the star of the, the uh, Academy Award winning movie, How High. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wu Tang affiliated, Red yeah. Man, uh, okay. had an episode of MTV Cribs uh, at his house in Staten Island where uh, a couple things he had his recording studio quote unquote in his bathroom where he had just had a regular XLR mic like we're talking into just sort of hanging over the shower curtain uh, he was like and he goes yeah you know you sing the best in the shower so I got a studio in my shower yeah, what else does he record with <laughs> yeah. that and then uh, he had uh, a door his doorbell was two wires yeah. that you had to you like rub tap. them together like you just rub them together and it'll ring the doorbell because the doorbell had been stolen uh, and then my favorite part of Redman's house it was just like a regular like townhouse basically like in just a like 
it's Staten Island. Uh, and well, that's uh, why like you have to pay for to live there, right? But it's still like it wasn't anything opulent. He it did was have a dump. He had, it was a dump, and he had Cristal in the fridge, which was like the thing at the time. But in <laughs> just in that context, was hilarious. And on top of the fridge was his box of money. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah man. And, and anybody can see where he keeps all this <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah, so but it goes, was like it was. He a, goes, "This is where this is my box of money," and he just pulls it down and he just starts kind of tossing up, and you see like very clearly like fifties and hundreds and. Just, but there just, was like goes, whenever pennies just, in there. Too. Yeah, there was just bullshit. Like he was just like, "This is where I put my extra money." So whenever I need this money, I get bit. some bread or some juice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Go man. to my money box. You know, Every single man needs a money box. I need a box of money. Man. And there was the other one where he yeah. just had a pile of toys in the box, and he's just like, "Yeah, I got all these toys here <laughs> in case I need to get my nieces or nephews a Christmas present." <laughs> I don't have to go to the store. I'll just use one of these toys. He doesn't know that you yeah, shop cousin online now. And his cousin was asleep now. on the floor. <laughs> oh, that's right. It was just, a, it's my cousin Sugar Bear. Don't mind. Were they him. wrapped? Hopefully. I'm, I'm, yeah. No. Okay. No. They weren't wrapped. They were open. He had to wrap them. But knowing oh, Red Man, he probably I got crystal and I got all these Legos. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so you uh, worked in the uh, in the animation biz. I do motion graphics now. That is animation, but it's not character animation. So I, you I put do... like po- points on people's faces. And that yeah, kind of... yeah. Oh, cool. I know how to do all that and any like ESPN kind of logo, you know, with shit that spins around. That's all pretty yeah. high end motion graphics. I know how to do that. But as far as two D character animation, I know a lot about it, uh-huh. and I want to put more of that stuff in what I do now. Okay. I, I couldn't, I've never worked for like a studio. So me and Fire so bonded because I think, you know, I went to Gasser and we got along all right. But it turned out on top of that, that Fasso had gone to school for animation. And I'm, yeah. although I haven't myself, I'm practically a Walt Disney talent when it comes to these kind of things. So we get high together. We have a few drinks. So, no, we watch a lot of animation we, together. We really, we bonded over drinks, but then we really bonded over old Looney Tunes, yeah. I'd say. Are you a Tex Avery guy or a Chuck Jones guy? I'm more of a Clamp. I mean, I like them all, but I like Bob Clamp. Get him, Faso. Ooh, yeah. all right. Ooh. Bob Clamp. Rivers it. likes Tashlin. <laughs> Tashlin's good. I didn't know until recently that Tashlin went on to And Pat likes so Carl many. Stalling, so I mean. Okay. <laughs> Tashlin went on to, to do so much live action stuff, and he worked with Jerry Lewis a lot, right? Who is this? Frank Tashlin. Was he? He was uh, a Warner's director. Oh, he was a Warner's guy. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Uh, Warner's but, cartoons vary a oh, lot by I, I director. I thought you were actually attached. I didn't know he was just talking shit. No, no. I, oh. I don't know who that is. I, I no, no one knows show. who it is except Dust Fossil. Oh, <laughs> all right. It's the only time I can get nerdy about stuff. No, I think, uh, you know, just just whipping out a uh, are you into Tex Avery or Chuck Jones, that was that was the deepest pull I've got. <laughs> and and, and, and yeah. I knew where I, 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 that, that pal was just going, I mean, uh, that, 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 uh, what's his name? Okay, Bugs. I forgot your name. Faso. Faso. <laughs> John Faso. Face Off was going to come up. Name. He was going to say Bob Clampett, because as we know, Clampett was Tex Avery before Tex Avery was Tex Avery for the most part. Well, Clampett took over Avery's unit when Avery went over to MGM. And okay. Clampett's cartoons were wackier than a lot of the ones that Avery did for, they, the, they with were, the exception of probably Porky and Wacky Land. But yeah, they were pretty wacky, but they they were much better drawn, I'd say, because they you know the animators are older. Well, right? he had Scribner working with him. Scri- yeah, Rod Scribner. They know all this shit because I tell you all this shit. I'm just <laughs> testing to see if you still know it. If also. you if you look at a lot of the old Clampets before he left the studio, the animation is real wacky. Talk you know? about who this is, Clampett. Bob Clampett? Yeah. He was a director, he was, animation he was, director. He, yeah. In my opinion, the best Warner's director. Okay. But although they were all good. Well, he worked but, for Warner's, and then uh, did, did he work for anyone else before he became an end? After, that, in the 50s, he did TV animation. You remember did, Cecil the Sea Six Sea Serpent? Yeah. and Cecil, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> what is that? That was a show from it the 50s. It was like a puppet show. It was a puppet originally, but then he did cartoons of it. Yeah. Was it, okay. was it a regional one? The the puppet thing might have been yeah because like there was all those ones like Birdie the Bunyip and stuff okay. like that. Yeah, yeah but the Here, cartoon I think was national because he made a cartoon out of it eventually. Here's a good way to describe Clampett's style. If you know how in Chuck Jones cartoons when Bugs and Daffy are real kind of stoic in a way like in um um what's that fucking one the like, Rabbit Season Rabbit Season and all that you yeah. know Bugs is real stoic yeah and well drawn but kind of stiff. Clampett is the complete opposite of that. Okay. You know, he'll he'll bend anything. He'll you know stretch whatever squash and stretch. That's an animation term, just so you know. So what what what's a what's kind of a quintessential Clampett? Well, it's one 
that's in a group called the Censored Eleven. And the ones they stopped showing because yeah, they thought like, the racial content oh, was racial. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are... And <laughs> it's, it's called Coal Black and Deceben Dwarves. Oh, oh God. God. Yeah, but no, no, no. I gotta, we got to be okay, fair with this. Hold on, hold this on. Cartoon, yeah. though, this cartoon, though, this was a, a, a jazz age celebration yeah, of he, America. He actually... You look at it now and you're like, wow, you cannot make this. You cannot make this. But at the time, nobody really thought anything of it. It's a parody of Snow White, and it's one of them kind of adult cartoons. But it's also a war cartoon. Yeah, so they, they show it to soldiers, so it's got a lot of innuendos and things in it. But Snow yep. White herself is hot. She <laughs> is. <laughs> okay, in the, in the event that... attracted that, to <laughs> cartoons like I am and Mr. Goodnight. Uh, well, I never said that now, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> I never said that. Well, you like Hollywood and cool, cool World? Well, everybody does, but I, I was you know, really hot. But, you know, I never said that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're the one that likes Cool World. Well, who doesn't? I mean, it's, it's probably a master. But what was that other movie? It was, I saw this movie. It was the biggest ripoff. It was called Roger Something. And it was the biggest ripoff of Cool World that y'all had ever seen in your life. Cool World. Don't blow was that Bakshi. good. Ralph Bakshi. He's, he's number one as far as I'm concerned because he worked on Deputy Dog. So that makes him big around the good night parts. But if you want to talk about non-band cartoons uh, yeah. that Clampett did, how about... Uh, uh, a Tale of Two Kitties yeah, wasn't that, that one of his signature yeah, that ones? That was supposed to be uh, who, uh, who's the Jimmy Durante and it's one of the first Tweety cartoons. It is the first Tweety. And cartoon. there's two yeah. cats that are going after mm-hmm. Tweety that look like Abbott and Costello. It's her first one, and she's actually naked. She's pink, uh-huh. but she's the best Tweety ever because it was supposed to be a caricature of a baby. Yeah, but then after this, they said you can't have a naked baby. Well, it's not a baby; it's a bird. <laughs> well, you still. You yeah. still can't do it. That's why I tweeted King Yellow. Oh, okay. Didn't he do the one, my personal favorite of the Looney Tunes, the Duck Twacy, the Great yeah. Piggy Bank Robbery? Great Piggy mm-hmm. Bank Robbery, that's that's probably... With Neon yeah. Noodle and all them anime yeah. memes like that. He, he gets knocked out while reading a Dick Tracy comic book. Uh-huh. And then, you know, all the Dick Tracy characters come in. What about the one with the little man from the draft board with the Daffy Duck? And the mm-hmm. well, no, nah, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, all, all of these things, you, you, you look at it, you're like, they were drunk when they made this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe when they came up with it, but I feel like it's such detailed work, you couldn't really get like... Yeah, I mean, it is... Having to draw the same thing over and over by hand. As far as animation quality go, goes, Disney was obviously the best. Because, I mean, they had the money to get right. all the, the best people. Then MGM... And MGM sunk a lot of money into them Tom and Jerry cartoons, and you can tell by looking at them. Yeah. Yeah, the background look, and the music the, are very lush. The, I mean, the stories could be dull, but the animation is itself is yeah, very good. It's second only behind Disney, I think. Yeah, but then Warner's, not that they were bad animators, animators, but they were, you know, third down. Yeah. And the, so they kind of made up for it for actually being entertaining, uh-huh. you know, and using cartoons and they for actually, the way And they had more to. output. Like, they... they Am I they, right? Yeah, they, they had did. more output than than like MGM or certainly Disney did. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think yeah. Warner's actually started their animation as a way to sell sheet music. Because you remember the, the Warner's had a lot of music publishing. Yeah, yeah. And you remember in the '30s there was that mania for musical cartoons. Yeah, something they could have sound. So I think they eventually st- originally started it just so that you know they could have popular songs yeah, that they own the publishing rights to. Those were their merry melodies, right? Yeah, and then, yeah. Uh, the Looney Tunes were actual, you know. An outgrowth of the Merry Melody. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. both were the po- were parodies of the silly symphonies that Disney had. Yeah, right? yeah, and they were basically the anti Disney. Yeah, in a way. Although I will say this for early animation, I think Fleischer is really good too. But that's sort of a, from they an became, earlier see, era. This guy likes a lot of the Superman cartoons. Those I things are the them, shit. I find them dull. Superman kicks ass and all things. You you can't understand because you're not a Superman. But those of us <laughs> who can appreciate how good those things are. You you seen them fly share Supermans? I, I have know. not. No. Oh, check one of them out. They are badass. I mean, they they have to tell a story in like seven minutes, so it's pretty rushed. But it's for, not only is it one of the first superhero cartoons, it's one of the first sort of serious action cartoons that there ever was. Because when you look at early animation, it was almost exclusively either comedy yeah, yeah. or music. It is. I mean, I'll give it. This they were made in the forties, right? So yeah, the, I think some of them might have been even the late thirties. Yeah, so if you look at it and consider the time, yeah, they're done well, right? But, well, and then you know, uh, Batman the animated series is based on that style, right? Or at least initially, was it? yeah. Well, that's I guess what I could see. That that's what they said initially. They were trying to go for that kind of the Fleischer style of the of the early uh, the early Batman cartoons that from the nineties. Yeah, the backgrounds are real good. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> did you bring up Tale of Two Kitties? Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> oh, That's the familiar Looney Tunes opening music say, I fossil. Mean, I, 
I have the best drawing ideas when I'm drunk, and they look very Looney Tunish. I'm kind of proud of that. But it's my vice. I have to drink. But that's supposed to be Abbott and Costello. Thank you. What's the matter now? I'm afraid of the dark. <laughs> well, I'll let you out then. <laughs> wow, they do. Yeah, I get it. That's yeah. squash and stretch. A lot of squash and stretch. You can't see. You don't know what you're looking at. I Yet I picked it out intuitively. See how it's it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's the Arla Tweete. Yeah. yeah, she's not as yellow as she usually is. <laughs> Tweet is a boy fossil. Oh, yeah. If you look at his junk. <laughs> <laughs> he also, didn't he also do that one with, uh, I'm going to murder him. You know the one with Bugs Bunny and Red Hot Rider or whatever it's oh, called? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Red. That's the character's name, but I can't remember the Red Hot Rider. I can't remember the yeah. actual I'm name. A, I'm a UPA guy. Oh, Fossil one don't like UPA. Oh, you don't like what? UPA? Yeah. Mm, What's the, UPA? The, they were like, um, after the crazy animation that we just saw right there, people went real stylized in the 50s and the 60s. It were real, real simple characters, no extreme animation at all, right? Yeah, so yeah. UPA, the best known UPA is, is Mr. Magoo. Oh, I love yeah. this movie. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no. Gotcha. Mm. Never I mean, been the biggest fan of that style myself. I lo- yeah, so like the two main ones were, were Mr. Magoo and, and Gerald McBoing Boing, right? Yeah, and a, a lot of those kind of early commercials that you yeah. saw on TV, like the 50s, like I Want My Maypole, are also good representatives of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I just really like kind of that the simplistic style of it. The, well, it the, had the characters de- were very well designed. It and, had a definite and, visual look, yeah. and yeah. it was very modern then, yeah, yeah. and there was sort of reaction against the... The, you know the elaborate like Disney style animation. So I understand why it was as big as its time. I, I think if it had a problem, it was just um, you know TV was coming out, and so everybody and their brother realized they could draw in like a minimalized style like that. And I, I think it contributed. I mean, to I just like the I actually, like the character design of like you know especially Mr. Magoo. I always thought that, what, or even the ones that were kind of similar to Mr. Magoo. You know like, what I think are similar to UPA, like your, your Rocky and Bullwinkles. Your your underdogs. I always liked, you know. Yeah, that was what was that? Total Television, I think. Did I don't know, Rocky and a little... no, no, Jay Ward did Rocky and Bullwinkle. Total Television did Underdog and Bull and uh, Tennessee Tuxedo. And they look like they're the same thing because they were animated in the same place. Yeah. yeah. Was, Speaking of both these styles, to connect them both, Rod Scribner, who was the crazy animator for Clampett. Went on to UPA, yeah, and did the simple stuff. Well, I think if you look actually in the visual arts, then there was sort of a mania for sort of simplistic and stylized. After well, yeah, World I mean War it was II. it was like the pop art era. Yeah, you know, there was I, like I think very the, sort of the influence of magazine comics yeah. had a lot to do with it. Because you remember even in like the funny pages, like Peanuts, very much looked like a what would then considered a magazine comic. Yeah, or even or things Lock like Horns. Yeah, or like yeah. BC, even things like that. They had that kind of simplified, uh, uh, minim- min- minimal, mobilized. A magazine cartoon thing, and the UPA was almost like a living version of that. Yeah, I always, I always really liked the kind of simple because, like, the Looney Tunes, Merry Melodies of that era, they're always like really visually cool, and especially considering the fact that like yeah. they were working in the kind of drawn. 2D, the medium that they had, it's like what they were able to do was really they, they super it, impressive. Yeah, they made cartoons cartoons. Yeah, yeah. You know, they didn't hold back at all. Yeah, but for like a repeat viewing sort of thing, I always am like, you know, I guess I'm dull. So I'm just like... <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I just Fossil. love it. I just want to see uh, Mr. Magoo walk into some things. And well, Magoo, me. you've done it again. Well, you might have noticed this is the only thing I know. Yeah. So I'm... You're dull, but at least you're not dumb. Yeah, you know, well, the thing is, a <laughs> well, fossil no, get a lot particular. Of it, I, I get a lot of it from osmosis because my wife's an animator. So. Well, fossil gets real That's particular right, yeah. with his animation, so he's just, he doesn't like this thing, whatever, and you can't get him to it's watch like my, it. I'm very particular. I'm, I'm a stubborn mule. Like I only like certain music. I only like certain animation. And Did just, you do? Do you like the the MTV? Animation, yeah, uh, any of the, the liquid like, television, yeah, or various, I do. Well, like Eon Flux and all that. I actually, did before I, anime was even anime. When I'm not a big anime person, but when I it did. was Japanimation, yeah, Japanimation, yeah, yeah. Japan just the good animation. old days. <laughs> I did like Eon Flux, Eon, <laughs> Eon Flux, but I don't know if I actually liked the cartoon or I just liked her. Yeah, you do, do you remember the Max or whatever that thing was? Yeah, that's a good car- and it was very limited animation cartoon for the most part, but they made it work really well, the Max. Does anybody remember that? I remember that yeah. vaguely. Yeah. yeah, the Max. It was a comic book or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it started as a comic book, yeah. And the bad guy was called Mr. Gone. 
When I'm on the spot, man, I'm just realizing, realizing how stupid I am because I know so much about this. You're stupid. Yeah. Bill You're Plimpton, not on the spot. okay. Bill, Bill Plimpton, Plimpton yeah. did a lot of the cool, uh, you know, like the um, in between animation spots and MTV, mm-hmm. where you know, like is how Bill to quit smoking, and then you know, is Bill Plimpton Fritz the Cat? No, no, he Ralph makes Bakshi. Plimp tunes. Who is Bill Plimpton? What's He's Plimpton? an independent animator. He makes his own films. He does pretty much all the drawings on it. He's the only independent an- an animator that I could think of, maybe besides Crick Falusi, who did Ren and Stimpy, that makes it work all on his own. Like he just mm-hmm. makes his own films. That's it. Yeah. You know, he doesn't bow down to any no corporations, man. Like he just releases his own stuff. Pretty well, kind of like Hertzfeld does now, right? Al Herschel? Uh, D- Don. Oh, Don. <laughs> yeah, Don Hurst. Yeah, I think he does that too. He's, yeah, but, he's, he, but he's really well known, you know. Yeah, he's, but he's been doing his shit since I think since MTV. I think mm-hmm. he did MTV stuff too. MTV animation, I always liked a lot. I mean, Beavis and Butthead, obviously, yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah. the greatest of all time. I mean, Daria was great. I always liked Daria, but yeah. Beavis and Butthead was. I had just, to tell you about Redondo Beach. Yeah. What? What about? If y'all want to just see, if you're in the mood to just watch some Beavis and Butthead sometime at night. You can go down to Redondo Beach, and one of them uh, uh, shrimp shack type places just has a TV outside where they play Beavis and Butthead all night. <laughs> what? With, with the music videos? Yeah, and with oh. the sound. So if y'all ever in the mood for just some Beavis and Butthead odd time of the night, come on down. To Redondo we had our Beach. own Beavis and Butthead moments down there when I would just drink too much. Well, yeah, well we kind of have that everywhere. <laughs> yeah. What? what <laughs> Foss was definitely the Beavis. Like what? <laughs> Thing, what well, that I, makes me the bedhead, and he was really ugly. What, what was I yelling that one night? I drank too much, whatever it was. And I was yelling. I don't know, but you were yelling something. I was yelling at the world, but over the pier. Just show me something interesting. Was that the night when you tried to climb on my back? And I was like, holy Christ, Foss. It was like four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are just down there watching a TV that's mysteriously playing Beavis and Butthead? <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Getting Pretty shit faced and, and climbing on each yeah, other and just talking about wrestling. Yeah, yeah, the, fuck yeah. That's how I roll. The thing that sucks about they because Beavis and Butthead's on TV like from time to time, but they always take out the music videos. And yeah, that's it's like, a copyright thing. Yeah, or it's the licensing. But it's, uh, the pacing stinks without the videos yeah, too. Yeah. Well, I, I when they when did the, that on the new ones. No, when they show when they show it on uh, MTV, they'll play the they'll, they'll play, play the, the music, music videos. videos. Yeah, it's just the DVDs that don't have it. Yeah, or uh, they show it from time to time on like Comedy Central. And oh, I don't okay. think they have that on there. The but. ones they run there are bootlegs because you can see by like the watermarks and all that they're from a while ago. And yeah, all, and they still have the videos I feel like in them. Beavis and Butthead were the kind of thing like Elvis or the Beatles, where it just happened when it needed to happen. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. The Beavis and Butthead. That's another reason why I'm so stupid. They were my Beatles. Yeah, yeah. They kind of were for <laughs> everybody too. in the yeah. 90s. <laughs> yeah. They well, were, people forget about that, but, you know, if you want to talk about the 90s, you know, people think about your Kurt Cobains and all this, but y'all got to put Beavis and Butthead right to. up there yeah. because they were like just the uh, voice in, of a generation. They yeah. really were. They encapsulated life in America then. <laughs> totally. Well, what's, you know, and I think I've made, we made this point before, but the problem when they brought it back, and I loved the, the one season that they did in like three years ago or whatever, whenever they brought it back, I thought it was brilliant, but it didn't last because the popular culture is now stupider than Beavis and Butthead. So the really? thing they're critiquing is dumber than they are. Like you can watch those new episodes and they're like making fun of Teen Mom and like I can't believe I'm pregnant and shit yeah, like that. Jersey and, uh, Shore and it's yeah, Jersey like, Shore and you're like, oh, they're smarter now than the thing they're making fun of. It's a sad world. Yeah. It is a sick, sad world. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> it's bring like, back to Daria. Yeah, the thing with the music videos was that they were dumb. But they're like their their points that were on point were always so subtle. Oh, like yeah. it was always was funny, so subtle. Oh, and if no. you were in, it was like, oh my god! But like when they're critiquing like something that Snooki and Jay Wow are you know arguing about something, right. they, it's just like it's too. They're smarter, obvious. Than, than, yeah, yeah. The pics people. of the music videos they showed yeah. were really good. Oh too. yeah, there were, there were so the random. odd odd videos that you never see anywhere yeah. else. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. like, the, like, like Ebenezer Good, <laughs> Plant Man, <laughs> and then. Uh, uh, there was a band I remember called The Rake's Progress that they showed. Remember <laughs> Army of Lovers? <laughs> <laughs> they showed the damnedest shit. Like the the, and then when they'd show the, the, they'd occasionally show like a popular one. So whenever yeah. U two was on, it was always just absolutely hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? I just remember, yeah, <laughs> butthead going get a, get out of here, the Edge. No one <laughs> no one wants you around. That dude's <laughs> name is the Edge. <laughs> <laughs> no, because. Yeah, the one with the, for for numb. It's like, yeah, numb. 
<laughs> yeah, it should be called dumb. <laughs> uh, I, I like, uh, my favorite was the uh, Amy Grant video, and then oh, yeah. Butthead goes, "Is this a Clarisville commercial?" <laughs> <laughs> Remember Crowbar? Yeah. I gave you my heart. They always sound like they're taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> this song, this song is fat. <laughs> it's slow and fat. <laughs> and then the guy at the end, it's just like, yeah, I bet his mom picked him up from the show afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's like and it's so funny because it's like there's a level of just subtleness to it that if you like are familiar with all the little inside jokes where it was it was funny as yeah. it, was, it was beavis and but i'm not the first the only one i've said this it was actually a better like pop cultural uh critique than people ever gave it credit oh yeah for. yeah I was like the inside jokes that like Mike Judge would throw in, like that he would like if like a Reverend Horton, like if it was a band that he knew personally, uh-huh. like Reverend Horton. He he was he on always, there. Like, I remember being going, "I got my wiggle stick." <laughs> 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 this guy looks like the guy that hangs out at the Maxi Mart and plays video games all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically just a show, that, like if. It just sounded like two drunk guys in a bar talking shit <laughs> yeah, yeah, when they were teenagers who couldn't get laid. You remember the one where they wish they had beards so they could get laid? <laughs> <laughs> so they cut their hair and tried to glue it to their face. <laughs> they, like they, saw a, they say they look like you, Puzzle. So they saw a ZZ Top video. <laughs> Damn, I'm smooth. <laughs> It was so stupid, but it was so funny. <laughs> I know. And I mean, it was interesting because, like, there was a lot of really good animation on MT, like Abby Terculi and all those people, like, the, the producers. Oh, okay. We're all, like, getting, like, you know, Daria was great. I always liked Daria a lot. The head. I like, like the oh, head. The head was really solid. I never was much into Aeon Flux. Oh, you know what was horrible, though, was uh, even though God did Ed Ed and Eddie, well, the brothers grunt. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember um, we tried to watch that high, and I was like, "This is like a nightmare. I have to shut this off." Yeah, um, or like the later celebrity death matches. I like, never kept for that uh, show. Yeah. That to me was the beginning of TV just becoming like well, but he did junk that was even dumber than the internet. He also did uh, a lot of the um, Spike and Mike Twisted Festival stuff. He got popular with Lupo the Butcher. Yeah, that was good though. But well, the brothers' grunt was just good. well, Antonucci. Ant- yeah, it sounds Danny like Critch Faluki. Dan but Antonucci. it's Ant- Antonucci. Yeah, he was, did Ed, Ed, and Eddie. There was another one, and uh, that I always liked. It was a it was a Swedish cartoon called Robin, where it was like if you've ever seen the video for Paranoid Android by uh, Radiohead. No, I haven't. okay. The, the 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 characters were taken from it. So it was a Swedish animator, and he did stuff for like Cartoon Sushi. Okay, uh, and it's really it's really hilarious because they like dub it over with the English uh, narration. So it was like basically one of those things where it's just like it was made in Sweden, but they did the whole Mister Bean thing where it's just like well, you could dub in whatever parts you would need in whatever country. So it, it's like really. F- it's really super hilarious, and I highly yeah, recommend it. Check it's, that out. Yeah, it's really good. It's uh, I forget the guy's last name, but the guy's first name is Magnus. But it's a uh, Ultra of Magnus, not maybe? Ultra, but Purchase Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's uh, it's it's called Robin, and it's it's awesome. It's really good. It's pretty. It's a little bit twisted, but it's really hilarious. I would, you know, I I think MTV did so much cool shit with animation mm-hmm. back in the day, and if they, if MTV or any, I don't care what channel, it just like they can know how useful of a tool animation can be and how many people will watch it because it, you can make it as stupid as you want like Beavis and Butthead yeah. or even yeah. all the Adult Swim stuff yeah and I don't like, go for that stuff it's not about animation it's just about people trying to do what well, they think is quirky humor well so was Beavis and Butthead though really yeah but like, that had the, not exactly known for its animation yeah but quality. it was hand drawn so it was a labor of love everything nowadays is just programmed oh, no, no, no. you you, yeah. you don't discount the animation greatness that is Assy McGee. So <laughs> I loved Assy <laughs> McGee. Assy McGee is amazing. All right, conceptually, I'll give them some credit. <laughs> but even I ain't high enough to watch shit like that. <laughs> oh, I, I showed a Assy McGee. Assy McGee. Was the, uh, fucking, did you ever, did you ever see Assy yeah. McGee? He sees him every time he looks in the mirror. <laughs> oh. That's why he grew the I beard. Love, I just love the power. He's playing the harmonica. <laughs> and it's just a butt. <laughs> Did he have to play it vertically? Yeah, he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a great show. It was, uh, yeah. That was one, because I remember they put the pilot Acid out. Acid McGee, Pat approved. <laughs> they, they put the pilot out, 
probably two years before they actually made a series. <laughs> and they would show the pilot sometimes just randomly on Adult Swim. And I was like, fuck, they need to make this into a full on show. And then they did. And it was so good. <laughs> you should do this in live action. Inspector Gadget was like that, too, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't make Assy McGee for more than like six episodes. No, because it's so like... stupid. <laughs> it's so incredibly Have you seen stupid. This good night? I know what it is. Yeah. 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 It's just like a, it's a butt. It's a butt, <laughs> yeah. it's a like butt a, with legs. A dress socks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and dress socks and garters. And it sounds like Stallone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so amazing. I'm yeah. sorry about that. I'm sorry. Assy, are you out of your freaking mind? There is no outside. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, let's get off. The Over your head. <laughs> I should probably go home. It's a fucking an ass drinking out of a flask. It opened up too. It opens up to drink. It's so fucking stupid. It's the best. And this episode this- it has the best line ever. And the, all the episodes were like ten minutes. Yeah. So like you know, because you couldn't for thirty. You couldn't minutes, get that much ass out yeah. of it. Yeah. It, they're chasing Saddam Hussein, and. <laughs> And he, he gets the idea that the Goodyear blimp is like going to blow up like the Super Bowl or something like that, like in the movie Black Sunday. And he grabs a bazooka and he just goes, adios, blimp. And just like <laughs> blows up the, the blimp. This, this animation, this show actually gives me hope. I'm just like, you know what? I can make something. I should start pitching shows. You could certainly if be a human what... ass if you wanted to, Fossil. Yeah. Honestly, at this point, I like anything. I'm just glad people are creating anything. There's so much 3D animation. I mean, some of it can look okay. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not the biggest fan. You know, I prefer the hand-drawn look. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I love Warner's the most. And, of course, Ren and Stimpy. That I think that's the... Yeah, you I know, grew up watching I, that stuff. Yeah, I, I guess really Nickelodeon. Love, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I grew up with all the all the Nickelodeon stuff too. Yeah, yeah all the Nicktoons were generally pretty good, like Doug and yeah. Uh, and you know, see, for me, the Nicktoons were the beginning to the end. They stopped showing the little koala. Well, they we, stopped showing Cow the Duckula. The things that we actually agree on here is that if you were one of the, cause the Nicktoons at the time, either had Ren and Stimpy or Rugrats or Doug. And if you like Doug, then you were a nerd. I don't know. Yeah. There was like a perverse it was sort of yeah. yeah. There was a perverse sort of entertainment. Like, if you, not if you brand spanking new Doug. Though. Preferred yeah. Doug over Ren and Stimpy. Like I mean, yeah, those, those kids are just weird. I yeah. mean, it was like a good placeholder. It was better than watching like you know fifteen or something like. That. It was entertaining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> salute your shorts. I thought was better than a lot of those ones like that. I I was a big. I, I liked uh, Rocco's Modern Life. Rocco's Modern Life, Life was that great. Was right, Mainly yeah. because the devil's name was Peaches. <laughs> He talked like the singer in ACDC. <laughs> you know the who did the voice one. of Rocco is? Um, Carlos Alas Rocky. Yeah. yeah. Yep. He does a lot of voices. He did the Taco Bell dog, and he's yeah. Officer Garcia on Reno 911. Yep. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Whoever is number one IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, there was a really great one where Heifer goes to hell. And the de- and Peaches, who's the devil, is like accusing him of stuff, and he's like says he's like a glutton or whatever, and he goes, "I admit it, it's true. I'm a gluton. <laughs> I'm a gluton." Well, is that the one where he has like the 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 um the game show that he has to go on? To? Yeah, yeah. And it's so. just like big fat cow. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people find you on the internet, sir? On Twitter, at, at John Faso, and, and I'll probably be drunk. And in real life, can find you every Wednesday night. <laughs> Co-hosting the Grandview Open and Mic Venice in Boulevard. Mar Vista. Can I make a shout out? Yeah, Since this is the animation episode. Oh. If you guys really like animation a lot, I would highly recommend. My wife has a movie that she's been uh, producing, self-producing. Hey, now. For, oh, the balloon one? Yeah, yeah. The, it's called The Fantastic Flights of Sophie Blanchard. It's, it's, it's a great just an epic production that she's been going through because she has to do the research and she's been animating it herself. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, it's fantasticflightsmovie.com, I believe, uh, or just look up Fantastic Flights of Sophie Blanchard on, uh, on the Google. Uh, it's really fantastic. It's about the first female uh, pilot 
mm-hmm. back in Napoleonic times. Uh, she was not just a bloom pilot. She was also almost like in a, she did science, but she was also in a way like the evil Knievel of the Napoleonic times. It's a great story. Wow, my wife's nice. a fan. Yeah. My wife's a fantastic animator and, uh, and you guys should check it out. Give it a look. Definitely. Uh, yeah. The trailers online. Um, and it's 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 fantastic, and it should come out probably next year, I think. So, hopefully, you know, hopefully, you guys give it a look. It's I'll really good. Take a look at that. Yeah, mm-hmm. hell yeah. So uh, you can follow us on Twitter. We're at the Goods Pod, Facebook dot com slash the Goods Pod, and uh, yeah, give us a rate and review on iTunes. That helps out our numbers. So. We'll uh, look forward to seeing you next time. And uh, to take us out, this is a band that actually started in Auburn, Alabama. Uh, my friend Lisa Taylor uh, is in this band. They're called Outskirts, and they have since uh, relocated to Austin, Texas, and are doing big things. So check them out on uh, SoundCloud and Bandcamp. The name of the band is Outskirts. This song is called Get Away, and we'll see you next time. Hoorah. from the woods was mixed edited and distributed by me rivers langley you can find the show on twitter at the goods pod our theme song was composed by dj smiles check him out on twitter at dj smiles (laughs) 